Yes, folks, how are you going? So this is the third in our series of videos on suds. In this video, we're going to look at different types of suds. As you would have started to suspect by now, suds could appear in different forms. All right. So for example, we would have started with this guy, these guys here. All right. On the left side. And then we went through a particular process, a particular mathematical process. And then we end up with a third looking like this, like this, like this, like this. So as you can see, we can express the same number. We can express the same quantity. We can express the same third in different forms. So let me start with the two forms that we have here on the board. So when you have... A third like this guy here on the left side. These guys on the left represent what we refer to as a simple third. A simple third, remember we are restricting our discussion of thirds only the powers of two. Eh? So everything we talk about will be in squares and square roots. Just remind yourself, however, that everything we discuss can also be applied in equal measure the powers beyond two. So, guys here on the left side, these are what we refer to as simple thirds. Right? So this is what we refer to as the simple third, right? Which is when you have the square root of what I called an imperfect square. So in terms of squares and square roots, the root of an imperfect square, that is a simple third. However, we saw that we went through a particular process and we end up here, coming from here. We know that root 5 is a third. Root 5 by itself is a simple third. So this too is also a simple third. However, if you put a 3 in front of the 5, now it's not so simple again. Eh? That is what we refer to as a mixed third. Mixed because you now have a coefficient in front of the simple third. So it's no longer just root 5. It's 3 root 5. Or it could be 4 root 5 or 12 root 5 or 7 root 5. We have 2 root 6 here. We have 13 root 3 here. We have 12 root 2 here. So in other words, anytime you have a simple third with a coefficient that is not 1, a non-unit coefficient, a non-unitary coefficient. That is what we refer to as a mixed third. And the reason why we talk about unit coefficient is because root 5 can be written as, we could say that root 5, we could write that as 1 root 5, right? Which we wouldn't really do because there's nothing to begin by putting a 1 in front here because we know that the one is understood. <clears throat> so in other words, we only expend time, energy, and effort to put a number in front of the root five if that number is not equal to one, All right? And since this has to be an integer, then we're talking about a number greater than one. So two root five, three root five, four root five, etc., etc. That is what we refer to as a mixed third. Right? So this would be a simple third. This here would be a mixed third. So the process that we went through in the previous video where we would have decomposed the third to get something else. We would have started with a simple third, but as simple as the third was, we recognize that we can factorize this as the product of a perfect square and some other number. We went through the process, bam, 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 and we end up here. Boom! 3 root 5. That is a mixed third. And of course, there are times when it will be more convenient to deal with it in this form. And there will be other times when it will be more convenient to deal with it in this form. That is something that you will get a clear sense of as you... Gain more experience with the mathematics 
in the course of doing the work. <coughs> so you have mixed suds, you have simple suds, and then you have what we refer to as a compound suds. A compound suds is a combination of either a mixed suds and a simple suds or two mixed suds or two simple suds. Right? So in other words, any combination and the combination has to either be addition or subtraction. Right? That is what we refer to in mathematics as a linear combination. Right? We don't want to get too much into the details of why the word linear, why the phrase linear combination applies only to addition and subtraction. Maybe we could do that in another video. But if we want to make it short and concise, we could say that a linear, let me write it on the board. Let me write it on the board. We can say that a linear combination, a linear combination, right, of two or more thirds. Is what we refer to as a compound suit, right? A compound suit. So you have three main types of suits that you need to be able to recognize, and you need to be able to recognize them by name. It is always good when you could see something in mathematics and know exactly what it is by name. Very often people get to the point of doing something with a quantity, with an entity in maths, and they don't really know what it is. If somebody asks you, where is that? You can't really tell them. And that is fine. That is okay. Right? If you get to the point where you could do whatever you need to do, even though you know, don't know the name of the thing that you're doing the thing with, that is fine. But then, Beyond that, if you're trying to get to a higher level, if you're trying to get to a further point, then at some point you will have to deal with what we refer to as nomenclature. Ooh, you see? Vocabulary. Hmm? And I'm doing this deliberately to underscore. We don't have no room here, but yeah, deliberately to underscore the point that. The language is a big part of the maths, right? The nomenclature, the, 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 the words and the language and the phrases that we use when we're talking about maths, when we're describing mathematical things. That is a huge, huge part of mathematics. That is a huge part of your ability to understand, to comprehend. To process the mathematics so yes you have to know what you're talking about and you have to be able as often as is possible to name it so that is why we're taking the extras up here of discussing different types of suits so that when you see a simple suit boom you know what is a simple suit you see a mixed suit boom you can recognize a mixed suit and then you have the compound suits well, let me do some examples too now all right so let me clear some space and use, we're going to use some of these same numbers on the board to describe the compound suit. So a compound suit could look like this. A compound suit could be 2 plus root 5. That's a compound suit. Because you have a combination of two or more suits. Okay, let me expand the definition. Hold on. A linear combination of two or more suits, you see? Um, hold on, eh? Making notes as we go along. In fact, let me write it over. Right? No problem with clarifying as we go along. Right? A linear combination of two or more thirds. Or 
Um, um, or an integer and let me see two or more thirds or more thirds all right don't worry we're gonna give some examples now all right that is your compound third see so even in explaining you see now where i have to correct myself because I have a picture in my mind of what a compound third is, but I just gave you a definition. So we have to expand the definition now. So let me start with the case where you have two thirds. And you combine that to form a compound third. So if you have, let me say, um, <clears throat> let me say root 3 plus root 5. That in itself is a third. If you're saying root 2 minus root 7, that 2 is also a third. So in other words, if we are working in a context where you're representing this here as one entity, this linear combination, addition or subtraction of two thirds, then that is what we refer to as a compound third. Not to be confused with a mixed third, where with the mixed third you're multiplying all right so a compound third could also be let me see let me separate these guys here a compound third blue finish here boy a compound third could also be three plus root five or it could be two minus root seven that is compound thirds where you have a combination a linear combination of integer and third integer plus third integer minus third plus or minus linear combination this two these two here are also examples of compound thirds not to be confused with mixed third where instead of adding and subtracting, you're multiplying. So 3 plus root 5 is not to be confused with 3 root 5. 2 minus root 7 is not to be confused with 2 root 7. Right? 2 root 7 is 2 multiplied by root 7. 2 minus root 7 is 2 minus root 7. <coughs> 3 root 5 is 3 multiplied by root 5. 3 plus root 5 is 3 plus root 5. <laughs> right? So, this is your mixer where you're multiplying. This is your mixer where you're multiplying. Anytime you're adding and you're subtracting, that is a compound third. And the compound third could either take the form of integer and a third, integer minus a third, or third plus a third, third minus a third. <coughs> There's another class of thirds that I want to mention, which is what we refer to as a similar, as a similar thirds. Right? So anytime you have two or more thirds hold on let me just um let me just go in the gas station here top up yeah anytime you have two or more thirds with the same third factor then you can add or subtract but we'll come to that a little later let me let we deal with the concept of the similar thirds first so i'll give you a little preview a little trailer as we like to say all right so anytime you have let me say two or more thirds two or more thirds 
with the same the same third factor we refer to those as similar thirds similar thirds you see how much fancy fancy vocabulary we're using or the third thirds are just an easy topic yes of course they're easy topic but the topic being easy doesn't mean that there are not certain aspects of complexity in there Sometimes the complexity, part of the complexity, is the issue of language, as we just described a minute ago. <clears throat> so, if two or more thirds have the same third factor, those are what we refer to as similar thirds. Sound like something hard. It is so hard, you know. Chances are, you may have already been interacting with these guys. But, as we said a while ago, wherever possible, you want to know exactly what it is you're dealing with. What it is you're talking about. Alright? So let me give some examples of what we refer to as similar suits. Similar suits. Example. Root 5. 2 root 5. 7 root 5. 9 root 5. Bam, 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 bam. The same third factor. Right? The third factor is um, root 5. So if, for example, we have a situation where we have, uh, let me say, b root 5 plus 7 root 5. We can factorize that because root 5 itself is a factor. And if you factorize that, you end up with root 5 on the outside into b plus 7. Yeah, you have to be able to do that too. Right? So, when you get to the point in mathematics where you're dealing with suits, then if you find yourself in a situation like this, you have to be able to look at that expression and recognize root 5 as a common factor. And take that out as part of the regular factorization that you would do with your regular algebraic expression. So yes, it is quite okay to take out root 5 as a common factor. That is what we refer to as a third factor. Simply because it's a factor that is a third. <laughs> right? So, all of these, the common factor is root 5. Let me do a few more examples now. Yeah. How about root 7? 3 root 7, root 7 itself, which is really 1 root 7, um, 9 root 7, 81 root 7, etc, etc, etc. The common third factor is root 7. Alright? How about root 2? Change the color. Alright? Many times in your working, you'll get questions where you have root 2 occurring in a number of different places. So you have 3 root 2, you have root 2 itself, you have, let me say, 7 root 2, you have 11 root 2, you have 9 root 2, etc, etc, etc. Then you see know. So you have similar suits. So just a, a quick recap. You have simple thirds. You have the mixed thirds. You have the compound thirds. And then you have the similar thirds. Alright? Now, one more type of third that I wanted to look at. Alright? Um, <clears throat> In fact, no. I will deal with that in a separate video because that is where we're going to talk about the rationalization of suits. Right? That's a whole story by itself. So I will leave that alone for now. Except to say that 
we can now go on to the next video which will deal with the combination of certs. How do you combine certs using the regular operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and even division? Well, there we go. Next video. Stay tuned.